Hey, we're just in Raw here, and I'm doing a video on a Tuesday here because I'm actually going to bring, I'm actually going to bring back an episode, of one video of the anime reviews I usually do for a while because Borto is so currently on filler right now. We're going to get into the movie recap and told just yet. We're very close to that, but when the movie recap comes, I will cover that. So far, I still have, I'm still working on the uh, Terminator Power overview video. Just trying to get my bearings across on that video. But for now, we have an impromptu video of basically the premiere of Tokyo Ghoul Root. Tokyo Ghoul Re. I was going to say Tokyo Ghoul something else. Tokyo Ghoul Re is the premiere. Episode 1 came out along with the cold dubbing of Tokyo Ghoul Re as well. Which I'm going to call it first. I was kind of like a dumb idea to do both a sub and then a dub. Because let the English subtitle run through its course first for a few episodes. And then start doing dubbing. Because apparently right now, recently, animes are doing both. Releasing subbed first, and then after a couple of weeks, straight to the dubbing, which makes kind of makes no sense. At least give the time, at least give the anime a few time to breathe. So having someone dissect too many, too many, and people dissect two forms of content of language, speaking con in foreign way. But enough about that. We have the premiere of Tokyo Ghoul Re, and basically the one thing that most Tokyo Ghoul fans specifically were really hoping for, at least another adaption. Of Tokyo Ghoul series ever since Tokyo Ghoul Rue kind of looked bad teeth in mouth because it retconned from the manga, it didn't follow the manga, and basically completely changed how Tokyo Ghoul was perceived. But Tokyo Ghoul reading her hands, hopefully, to retcon the series of Route A left off. Hopefully, I'm not too sadly too sure. It depends on how far we're into the story we're going to get. As for the first episode, we have told Hunters, we have introductions to at least, I believe, five characters. At least so far, my characters, I believe, are going to be more important to the story. There's one more character in terms of one of the main character squad, however, but she hasn't given a full introduction yet. She's basically in game in her room. Confirms this is a girl. It's going to confirm that we have this, this character is introduced as a girl. <coughs> so, we're going to the names here. Starting with Kuki Yuri. I may pronounce these names, by the way. So, we have Kuki Yuri. He is a Rain 2 investigator. He has kind of like a dull appearance look, but he can get really emotional when things get tough. He is the Queen's squad leader, and he is revealed to be a one-eyed ghoul. So also, it turns out one-eyed ghouls are not exactly... One-eyed ghouls are always... We're not exactly uncommon, because... At first, when we were like Kaneki, who in the original Tokyo Ghoul, he was a one-eyed ghoul. That was a bit unrare. That was a bit rare to see a one-half, a half-human, half-ghoul hybrid. But now, in this case, that's not the case anymore. So we already met some few one-eyed ghouls. Basically, the old guy from Antenku, the owl, and it's pronounced the owl, also the owl. No, the one-eyed ghoul is also considered, I think that was the owl. And if you all like, they're the only two that actually were, no, were noticeable for having being one-eyed ghouls. It looks like in this case, the Queen Squad members are actually some one-eyed ghouls themselves. Following that, we have Ginchi Shirazu, who's a rank 3 investigator. He's one rank below Yurei. Then the mentor, we have, we have Heisei Sasaki, rank 1 investigator. He's the squad mentor, so he's ranked higher than Yurei. And he gives up the and he gives up the orders to Queen to Yurei, who is the squad leader. Well, he well he leads the other members of the team of his squad, the other four, not actually the other three. And he's also revealed both Shirazu and Sasaki are revealed to be one eyed ghouls. Their Kagane and have very much different. One's Kagane has like some sort of sword. You know, Yurei's Kagane has a sword in the in the right arm. Shirazu has has a Kagane where it's like he fires missiles out of it. And Sasaki is very similar to Kai. I'll get to that moment in a bit. I'll get to that in a bit. More to care if we have another, this time, not, in, not a squad member, but a first class investigator, Akira Mai. And I believe what has you strong. The blonde hair girl with some sort of reddish highlights in the back of her, sort of red highlights towards the end of her hair. Very similar to the girl that was Akira Mai up from the previous season. I could be wrong in that one. Maybe it's the same person. I'm not too sure. But it might be, it might be her. Even though it's the same model I'm referring to from the previous season of Tokyo Ghoul, let me know in the comments down there. And finally, to wrap up the squad, at least most important characters I believe to be, is Hide Mizuki. Rank 3 Investigator, he's also a member of the Queen Squad, but it's he has an eye patch on his right eye, but I'm not too sure that he's revealed to be in one eye ghoul because he can't even release his Kagane, or she, because I mean, like, the character is drawn to be like either shifting between both male and female side things. Like how, how Japan has um, some other characters that blur the lines between male and female character types. Right now, I'm guessing I'm going to call this a boy because I'm pretty sure he might, Mizuki could be a boy, maybe it could be a girl, I'm not too sure. 
And the story of the episode focuses around the, the, the main squad trying to find this ghoul called Torso, while another ghoul called Serpent, an S-Rank serp, S ghoul, was running around doing his own thing. And Torso seems to be like a... T they confront Torso towards the end. They confront Tor... There's an investigation trying to find exactly who Torso is. They find out that he's having attack a woman. So, so far, woman only only leaving attack, only leaving scarred on the upper body part portion of the body. And apparently there was also a scene where Tan went like a small girl, it turns out to be built from the same girl from Tokyo Girl. I forgot her name though. It was a little girl that went uh, had to lose her mother to the to, to the doves. And apparently she actually made so with Torso. The the the, the, the ghoul's nickname Tori is now titled Torso. And me and the Queen Squad, she makes a connection to Kent. Basically, Onichan, which has Onichan in the set, and Jeremy's. I watched the set. I watched this in the sub. It turns out some being maybe the fact the reason the Queen's, the Queen Squad and Ken Kaneki are basically close together because they're both one eyed ghouls. I'm pretty sure there's more of a deal for me than this. By the way, I should have pointed out the fact that I'm going at this review as basically as someone who's a casual fan of the Tokyo Ghoul series who didn't even read the manga, but I do know very some parts of the manga knows they left way after the beginning of the story. But. I didn't exactly read the manga to a full is exactly what I mean by this. So I could be I'm just going as a casual fan. If I could be wrong on some things, let me know that in the comments below. Timeline wise here, Bree has been set two years after Route 8, so basically after the attack of CG of the CCG attack on Anteku. After all the thing went down between McConaughey and Hyde, or Hyde died. Supposedly some people people somehow make theories, but he's still alive, but I'm pretty sure he's dead. There was a poster of him somewhere in an alleyway, I'm pretty sure we all know the fact that the member of the CGG actually did die in the battle on Teku. But Hyde is supposed to confirm, I'm pretty sure he's supposed to be dead, unless he's not. I'm going to say he's dead, most likely, pretty sure in the manga, he's pretty much dead. Some people make speculation that he's not dead, but. He's, I'm saying he's dead, there's no way to even confirm that he's still alive, but apparently. Apparently, some people think he's still alive already, you know why. Yes, yeah, so it's again time test after two years. So, it was like, when I was not becoming more of a common thing. They were joined with Queen Squad or from members of the CCG. They're not does, by the way. They're not considered does, but they work they work on the brand of the CCG. And towards the end of the episode, which is kinda of, yeah, a little bit this is might lead to a bit. Some fans in the who read the manga kinda of like first name and only watchers of Tokyo Golden Hammer really thinking, wait, where the hell is Kaneki? Where's Kaneki in this story? But it looks like here. I wrote on the Sasuke, the main basically the main lead of the story. Who's in the rank one investigator squad mem squad mentor? Seems to have a connection with Kaneki. Towards the end of the episode, we see a moment like he was either face up against the serpent, getting his ass kicked, but it looks like some like a towards like some sort of memory like Kaneki had back then. Richard Tokyo Ghoul when he had with the uh, the red when he had with the binge eater. When you think about the binge eater, he had the same connection because he shared the organs of her and the Kagane. In this case here, his Kage is fairly similar to Kaneki's in a way, not too similar, because it's like more liquidified. It was more liquid. In this case, his connection with Kaneki is basically somehow related to the same way that Kaneki had with the binge eater ghoul. Every time it's like, your friend, he was like, there, why we didn't even see his eyes, it's just the white hair, the black clothing, you don't know for the fact that he was tortured, and the handcuff chains are on his wrist and his ankles, saying, come on, you need me. Be with me. You know, being like, be with me was like, be one with me. He was like, come, come, come on, come on, come on. Be one with me. He's like, no, I refuse to be the merge with you, but to so when he activate his one eye ghoul, he has his one eye turned to the side of his ghoul side, the one eye ghoul from his left eye, he did the, the, he did the Kaneki thing where like, breaks his finger with one finger like this, and although that's where cut off, we're leaving, that's where it ends, ends off. So, there's some questions I'd love to be an answer here, basically, what is the connection between Sasaki and Kaneki? And the next episode, we're going to see, there's a bit of a sign of a cop, there's a bit of a sign of a, a uh, coffee cell. So like we're going to, we're going to on Take You next season, and we're going to see Toka. I believe that's our name. It's been a while since I've seen Tokyo Go, the last time I've seen Tokyo Go was actually a live action movie. I think, no, I think her name was Toka. We're probably going to see her again next, next episode. And it looks like Tokyo Gold Re will be released on Tuesday, so don't expect that to be updated. I probably mean not be updating weekly episodes of Tokyo Gold Re because I can't exactly make a full connection between this story and the manga since so I haven't read the manga. But it looks like I'm guessing I have. 
But anything wraps it up. I'm pissed. I try to see some sort of Tokyo Gold refant videos every now and then. So, until then, leave a like, subscribe, comment below. See you in the next time in the next video. Laters.